Hi, and welcome to this week's Wu Wei Wisdom Life Lessons Teaching. It's great to be back with you all. This week, we are talking all about how you can finally face your fears and step out of your comfort zone. You'll learn why your inner child desperately wants you to avoid any new, unfamiliar, or difficult life situations. And so this means you end up staying stuck and never reach your potential. You'll also discover how you can confidently confront any difficult or unfamiliar life situations so you can thrive and grow. Okay, David, so why is it so difficult to do something that is unfamiliar or challenging? Why aren't we excited by it? Well, it's a good subject because it goes right to the heart of our teachings. And for those of you who are regular subscribers and listeners to, to our teaching, it's always good to go back to the fundamentals. And for new listeners, let's kind of split it down because this goes right to the core of the teaching that I try and say on every episode, you are the creator of your emotions. You are not the victim of it. I know I repeat it, but it's so vitally important. And this is why it's important. Even people who have had a couple of sessions and listened to the videos and they write in and they still say, I don't understand. I would love to do this, but I'm scared. And what they've done there in that, that nuance is they've based themselves in their fear rather than trying to understand what is the belief that creates the fear. So this is the mind of the inner child. The inner child is using emotions to live in what I call a utopian world, a world which is the way that it wants it to be, when it wants it to be, how it wants it to be. It wants to be in total control future-proofed, I call it. It wants to know what's going to happen, and it's going to happen okay, and is it, he's going to, or she's going to come out on top, and everybody's going to think she's great. Now, the unknown, the inner child will go, well, that could be worse. Let's stick with what we know. And this is the key that confuses people, Alex. Let's stick with what we know, even if it's unsuccessful. Because maybe if we try harder, if we work harder, we can make the unsuccessful into success rather than trying a new path, which is the unknown for the inner child, and they will resist it. But do you not think, David, that deep down somewhere inside us, we know that by playing small, by not stepping out, by not trying new things, by not having those difficult conversations with people that we know we ought to have or not trying for that new job, which will kind of make us feel more alive, even though it's a bit unfamiliar for us. Deep down, we know that we're doing ourselves a disservice yes. by staying in this inner child comfort zone. That's exactly right. And I would guess that's why the majority of our supporters listen to us because they have this internal struggle, this kind of uh, like a tug of war where the inner child part of your mind, remember again, for those who are new, we're talking about your subconscious mind and you could call it your ego or the negative side of you. I would want you, and you'll see why, to think about it as you when you were six, seven, eight, nine, that time period between six and nine is very important and so the inner child and the mature you has this internal battle this struggle where the inner child wants to stay on the familiar but unsuccessful road and the mature you what i would call shen the spiritual you valuing your uh, worth and your value would want to go and try new things. And then that creates this internal tug of war. But surely, David, as we're now adults, we're no longer children. Why is our mature, authentic adult self 
not calling the shots here, not not kind of saying, you know, Alex, this would be, yes, this trying for this new job may be uh, challenging. You may not quite know what you're doing to begin with in some aspects, but this is going to be so good for you. This is going to uh, expand your horizons. Why is that part of us not speaking very loudly to us and kind of taking control of the inner, the crazy, that, fearful inner child. And that really is one of the most fundamental questions. So for you listening to this teaching, can you answer, Alex, before I do? Why do we surrender to the inner child, even though we know that the path is unsuccessful? And the answer is the inner child has direct access to your emotions. So you don't do it because you're fearful, you're anxious, you're, you uh, don't want to be judged, you don't want to be criticized, you don't want to be compared, you don't want to fail, you want to be perfect. You see, all of these that we've done so many teachings in the archives, I mean, literally, probably a hundred teachings on all of the variations for different people, people-pleasing caring about what other people think, trying to meet all other people's expectations, trying to please your parents. It goes on and on and on. But the power lies not in the misguided belief, but in the ability to engage in the emotional feelings, experiences that's created in your body. And then the mature you completely surrenders and goes, I think even your your introduction, you'll say things like, I haven't got the confidence. I would love to do that, but I haven't got the confidence. Well, confidence is a feeling. I'd love to do it, but I create a feeling which means I can't do it. it this is nonsensical. This is the problem. I'd love to do it. I've always wanted to do that, but I'm fearful. Can you hear... That's what I call a kind of a, a victim statement. I want to do something. I'd love to change jobs. But you know, I'm so comfortable in this job. Better the job you know. That might be worse. This is the voice of the inner child that you've got to understand and make that separation. Because the inner child badly, it's not a monster. It's not out to get you. It's not trying to mess up your life. It's a child frightened in the corner and he's saying, I hate this, but it could be worse. It could be monsters around the door and it needs you to help that part of your mind. So what I heard you say at the beginning there, David, is it's almost like our inner child holds a set of uh, faulty beliefs. Childlike beliefs. Childlike beliefs. Mm -hmm. He wants things to be perfect. He doesn't want to be criticized. He doesn't want to make mistakes. He doesn't want to be shown up. He doesn't want to be put in a situation that he thinks he's not going to be able to cope with. Mm -hmm. And they're all, all of those are inner child beliefs. Yes. And the inner child expresses those beliefs in the form of emotional feelings yes. so in a way emotional feelings would you say they're the language of our yes. inner child we've said that many times this when you are experiencing a particularly intense what we call red light feelings i would prefer to call them a red light feelings rather than anxiety or tension or stress because that has a connotation of its own so when you experience a red light feeling or a green light feeling, a positive feeling. This is the language. This is your inner child trying to communicate with you. And the only way that they can get your attention, that's what they're trying to do, to get your attention is by creating these intense feelings. And instead of giving the child attention, you then surrender to the inner child. And that's where it goes wrong. That's the problem. The emotions are, for you, you call yourself highly sensitive, you call yourself not strong enough, I've got no confidence, I've got no willpower, I, I'm lethargic. My clients will call themselves lazy and all of these negative ideas rather than going and addressing what the inner child is trying to communicate to you. And when you say addressing, David, you're clearly not saying... Um, you know, notice the feelings and let the 
and then let your life be dictated by the feelings. Absolutely because not. that's, you know, if we are not facing our fears, if we are playing small, if we are not stepping out of our comfort zone, we are certainly noticing the red light, uncomfortable, painful feelings, but we are letting them dictate all our actions and choices and decisions in our life because we are staying safe in the familiar, in the in the stuff that isn't stretching us, is keeping us from reaching our potential. So you're saying, of course, acknowledge the inner child. Absolutely. Acknowledge the inner child's emotions. But then what do we need to do differently? So we're still well, acknowledging, but what do we need to do differently? Here? Well, just put it in what I call the Shen test. Imagine you have your physical, your biological child, and they come home from school and they're about six or seven, and they come home from school and you can you can tell that they're upset. They slam the door, they throw their school bag on the floor, and they come to you and say, Mom, Dad, I am totally fed up. School is not going to the way that I want it to. I want to be number one in the class. I want the teacher to make me special. I want to get everything right. I don't like it when I get something wrong, and people may laugh at me. What would you do then? You would not go, oh my goodness, well, let me go to bed or let me have a drink of whiskey or let me avoid you. You would say, okay, let's sort this out because your thinking is wrong. You would never, you're never going to be number one all of the time. You're never going to get every test right. The teacher and your friends at times won't enjoy you or disagree with you. I've got to teach you how to deal with that. And that principle is not what you do to yourself. So when your inner child kicks off, what do you do? You avoid, or you say, like you wouldn't say to your physical child, you're absolutely right. You should get everything you want when you want it. I'm going to go down to that school tomorrow and I'm going to tell your teacher to make you number one, to make you special, because that's how you should live your life. You wouldn't do that. And equally, you wouldn't say to your child, well, oh yes, darling, I can see why this is a very, very scary situation for you. And let me protect you. And I'll, I, I'm going to take you away from this school now because it's obviously very uncomfortable for you. And you don't need to learn Oops. these lessons. You don't need to learn new things, you know, but that's what we do that's when we withdraw from facing new situations, new people, new challenges. That's exactly right, Alex. That's a good. That's another good example. You wouldn't say to your physical child, okay, sweetheart, I'll tell you what, go into your bedroom and stay there for the rest of your life. Mm. Lock yourself in and mummy will be outside and protect you. No bad people will come to you. You won't hear nothing. You won't see nothing. But in a way, that's what you're doing to your inner child. And that's why I call it the Shen test. Would you say that to your child? When you say that self-talk to yourself, in any way, would you say that to your physical child? Because that is exactly what you're saying to the inner child. And that's why I like the metaphor of the inner child. Because I want you to think about the mature you that Alex called, the you that's watching this, I would call the authentic you or the shen you or the grown-up you, to think about you as the spiritual parent. And think about that voice inside of you. And some of my clients great, have great value. In, it doesn't suit everyone, but they find a picture of themselves when they were about six or seven. A couple of my clients have found a picture of the child really having a bit of a sulk or a temper tantrum. And, and, and what they say to me, they find it very, very effective I'm giving you this uh, passing, it's not even my idea, it's my client's idea, that when they're sitting down and having their 10 minutes, what I call meditation, they put this picture of themselves and they talk to the picture. They say, I'll make sure nobody knows I'm doing it because I think I'm crazy, but I talk to the picture. And if you think about you as you are the spiritual parent, and this is your spiritual child, and you have to give it the emotional education, that's what we're giving it, the same way as you would to your physical child, you're giving it to your spiritual child, you're giving it the emotional education that for whatever reason, maybe a dysfunctional family, maybe abuse, maybe lots of reasons, 
you didn't get as a child. But you are the one that has to be accountable now. And this is why this is such an important teaching. The inner child for me from all of the ideas is the one that works the most efficiently because you can have this duality in your mind and then the solution that we're trying to achieve in our model based in Taoism is to bring the duality into a oneness. Mm -hmm. So the inner child and you are not having this internal tug of war. You become one, connected. And that you are together as a team, there is no, there's no tension. There's certainly not the inner child leading the adult, no. mature, authentic part of you, but that this authentic Shen part of you, the spiritual part of you, is in effect the guiding parent to the child. Yes, in, in Taoism, it's thought of as like the compass, yeah. the compass pointing the way. And now the, the child may have a little bit of a kind of a, a stroppy, what, what I call squealing piglet, a child may have a quiz, squ a squealing piglet, but if you know that's your direction, the direction of travel, the direction of the compass, and then you educate your child, you communicate with your child, and all of the things that your child is looking for externally, so it's looking for reassurance, it's looking for validation, it's looking for approval, it's looking for someone to give them a hug and say, it's okay, sweetheart, just trust me, I'm going to do it. It's looking for all of those things, but it's been looking outside of yourself to other people. And again, here the fundamental, this is why I said this teaching hits right at the root of the fundamental of Wu Wei wisdom. Instead of looking outside to external sources, we want to train it to look inside to you. So again, the inner child and the Shen Yu, the mature you, the spiritual you, whatever the authentic you, whichever word you would prefer to use, come together. And as Alex said, like a team, pulling in the same direction. I can give you a Taoist teaching on, on this that I received. It says, imagine a carriage with two beautiful horses at the top of their performance. Two horses pulling the, the carriage. And it doesn't matter how wonderful these horses are. If they're pulling in opposite directions, the carriage won't reach their true potential, as Alex said in the, in the introduction. What we have to do is to bring these horses aligned in the flow. This is Wu Wei pulling in the same direction. And now, instead of wasting your energy on the tug of war fighting, where you're always tired, you're always listless, you're always stressed, you can't cope, you're not good enough. Now, with less effort, now you'll be in your flow. Effortless effort. And that's what the Tao and Wu Wei means when it says Wu Wei effortless effort. It doesn't mean you don't do anything, but what you do is like in that sweet spot, in that flow. It's got, You look around and see people struggling, and you're just in your flow. I used to love uh, when you watch athletics, you know, Alex, and you see a great runner like Usain Bolt, and they slow it down, and, you, and it's a front shot, and you see everybody else really straining and pulling, and the neck... And you see Usain Bolt, he's almost like so relaxed, his body is relaxed and he's in Wu Wei flow. And do you think, David, the reason why we strain and pull is because essentially we are buying into those inner child beliefs that I have to do this perfectly, everyone has to like this, I can't make a mistake with this, this can't be difficult for me. So if we hold on to all these inner child expectations, it's like every new thing we try, no matter how, regardless of the fact that we could do the new thing with a greater level of ease, a greater level of enjoyment, even if it's like, each, you know, what am I doing here? We could almost embrace that unfamiliarity. But because we are buying into these inner child expectations, these faulty expectations, anything new becomes like grinding gears. There's that kind of, uh, 
resistance. Well, all I can say to that, Alex, <laughs> is yes, 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 and more yeses. You know, one of the it always it always kind of strikes me, and I have to smile when I've done a couple of sessions with a client, and we've gone through all this stuff, and we've uh, we've found out for them what what it is that what the misalignments are. That's 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 what we were looking for. I like to use a kind of more explosive words because it kind of focuses you. So it's a misalignment, but I like it's a lie. It's a lie. You're lying because that allows because that allows you to focus. And this is the number one thing that I hear of my clients. I, I would say that most clients who have broken through and I know it's going to work and they're going to change their lives. They say to me, it's really hard to accept this, David. <laughs> it's really difficult. And I go, why? And do you know what they say? <laughs> it can't be that easy. Mm. Yes, it is that easy. Live your life truthfully. And I mean your self-talk. Stop lying to yourself. If you've ever said the three lies, I'm not good enough, I can't cope, I'm unlovable, you are lying to yourself. Be honest. What you think and what you see and what you say to others, be honest. Be honest with yourself. Act honestly. And then integrity. Live your life that you honor your integrity. And many of my clients many years ago say, what do you mean by integrity? And I used to say, walk the walk. Talk the talk. And I think that's a good explanation. Over the last few years, to make it e is even clearer, if you want to get a good idea what I mean by integrity, look at the opposite word, hypocrisy, where you do things and you tell people what they should be doing. You're very good at telling other people. I bet you can sit there and you can cure the world, can't you? People come to you and they ask you advice and you give them wonderful advice. But you're a hypocrite. Why? Because you don't follow your own advice. Because you're sitting in your comfort zone Absolutely. telling everybody else what they ought to be doing, but you're not doing it. And that's why yeah. this is a fundamental yeah. core teaching of Wu Wei wisdom that you can change today. Today. And then clients will say, oh, it can't be that easy, can it? Yes, it's easy. Will you get it right today? No. Will you get it right tomorrow? No. But over time, you'll get better and better if you stick to those very simple principles. Here are the principles. You have innate, intrinsic value and worth. No one can give it to you. No one can take it away from you. Your intrinsic value and worth is different to society's value and worth. And how you connect to that innate value and worth, Shen, truth, honesty, and integrity. What could be simpler? Now, we've literally done hundreds of videos and teachings. What are these about? These are about all of the avoidances that your clever little inner child sets up. Oh, I have to be perfect. Oh, I can't fail. Oh, I'm worried about what other people think about me. Oh, I don't want to be compared to my brother, sister, my friend. Oh, they're doing better than me. Oh, look, they've got a better car. Oh, they're getting more money. Oh, oh my goodness. And we try and do a video to understand that. But this, when you come down to it, is simple. It's about you valuing yourself, not looking outside of you for other people because they will change. That's society. Values in society change. And it's you in value your innate worth, who you are. You are a spiritual being. You are awesome. And I can say that quite clearly. Why? Because everyone, look at Alex. She is awesome. Everyone is awesome. Now, are you living to your potential? And that's the only question that you can answer. Are you following your compass? You know the way. Why do you then divert because of a set of emotions that you are creating? There's the silliness about it. You are the creator of your emotions. Therefore, you can't be a victim. Stop with the victim statements.
Brilliant. Thank you, David. Well, I will put links in the show notes to more teachings that will help you with this topic. So teachings on believing yourself, valuing yourself, dealing with self-doubt, all those core inner child teachings that will help you step out of that comfort zone. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this teaching. Please do let us know and perhaps share it with someone else who you think may also benefit from it. David works every week with clients all over the world by a Zoom video call on exactly these sort of issues. If you'd like to learn more about David's one-to-one sessions, I will also put a link to learn more in the show notes about those as well. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We produce new teachings every week and we would love to share your journey with you. Bye-bye.